Hello, everyone. My name is Shelly Calhoun-Jones, and I'm a Technical Marketing Director here at Cohesity. Today, I'll introduce you to Cohesity Fort Knox, a fully managed data isolation solution that allows you to maintain an immutable copy of your data until you need it. This process is known as cyber vaulting, and organizations use it for data retention, auditing, recovery, and enhancing resilience against ransomware attacks. Ransomware can also target backup environments, as attackers rely on their victims not having a valid and complete backup, often leading them to pay the ransom. We're currently in the Fort Knox dashboard. This provides a centralized view of your stored data, including Cloud Vaults, which makes it highly convenient. A Cloud Vault is a secure cloud-based storage solution that protects sensitive data like backups. And in this example, we can see vaults in various regions accessible from a single view. Now that we've taken a look at Cloud Vaults, let's examine Quorum and understand how it operates. If you're not familiar with Quorum, it's an authorization framework that ensures a quorum of approvers is present to authorize sensitive operations. The quorum system functions similarly to a bank's safety deposit box, which requires both your key and a key from a bank to open. Any significant changes require authorization from at least two people to ensure the safety of your data. In a company managing a multi-cloud environment, Various platforms may require different approvers. You can create additional approvers by selecting the Create Group option. Let's examine the TAG Admin Quorum Group to understand this configuration better. The Quorum Group consists of three distinct sections. Group Details defines the name of the group and the system that it protects. Operations allows you to set task permissions. Approvers specifies individuals with the authority to approve requests. It's important to note that multiple approvers may be required to sign off on a request. In this example, there are three members in the approvers group. For production environments, the number of approvers should be based on the security requirements of the organization. In this example, we have both approved and declined requests. Let's switch over to the protection view to review recent activity. On this display, we can observe various protection measures implemented to ensure the safety and security of our workloads. These measures include regular backups and secure storage in a vault. I can access information regarding the Cloud Vault and the associated protection policies. By analyzing the timeline, we can determine whether the backup operation is meeting our SLAs or if we need to review the protection policy. Let's take a closer look at a protection policy. In Cohesity Fort Knox, a policy consists of customizable settings that determine how objects are protected, replicated, and vaulted. These policies enable you to create various configurations tailored to different use cases. To illustrate this, let's add vault protection. In this example, I'll choose the Cohesity cluster policy and click continue. We're adding vault protection to the policy and looking at the screen displaying the Cloud Vault where the data is archived, the time interval, and the data retention settings. The data lock feature ensures the security of your backups and vaulted data by preventing any unauthorized tampering or deletion. Since everything is in order, we can proceed by clicking on Add. Now let's take a look at the Gold Protection Policy. You can see that the Vault Protection retrieves its settings from here, and we could choose to only transfer data after successful operations. Let's return to the Fort Knox dashboard. Suppose that we require VM recovery. In that case, we can use Cohesity Fort Knox to recover. And let's take a closer look at a virtual machine, which can either serve as a standalone server or part of a multi-tier application running on a pool of virtual machines. You can search for a virtual machine or a protection group, and once you've selected it, you can proceed by choosing a recovery point. We'll select the snapshot location and choose Select Recovery Point. And then we'll click Next to configure the recovery options. On this screen, we can choose the location, 
and where we want to recover it to. In this example, I'm testing instant recovery to a new location and adding a prefix. Okay, we've specified our options. Let's click on Recover. We've received confirmation of the submission for quorum approval. Let's explore how this process works from the perspective of the approver. I'm logged in as the quorum approver and I can see the recovery request from the S. Jones admin account. I'll click on Approve. And you can see that the status has changed. If I tab back over to the other screen, we can see that it's approved. And if I click on Recoveries, we can see that the recovery is running. And our VMs are recovered, which completes the demonstration. We did a tour of Cohesity 4 Knox, added Vault Protection to a Protection Policy, and did a recovery. Thanks for watching.